you know, I think at the very least start small, you know, just push, be, push your comfort zone just a little bit. That circle of the comfort zone just gets wider and wider as you kind of push it out a little further. Cause you'll find that you do that first little push and then the circle's gotten bigger and then you do another push and the circle's gotten bigger. You know, you just kind of keep playing. It can be very playful with that edge, you know, and where that is. And um, you might learn things that you don't want to do again. That's very valuable too. <laughs> and you might learn things that you are easier than you thought they would be, or, you know, that, that are very doable. Um, so definitely we like to play with that edge. Welcome to another episode of Everyday Badassery. I'm your host, Christine Lozada. And if you're new here, this is a travel podcast meant to inspire you to be just 1% more badass today than you were yesterday. Our small badass moments in life are what lead to our huge badass moments in life. And I am so freaking excited for today's guest, which is Jody. She's part of, she's half of Learners and Makers, a family that is a full-time traveling family. She homeschools her children. And this woman is just slaying her travel life with a disability. In other words, they're literally is nothing holding her back. And not only that, she wouldn't change anything if she could. In other words, her having the disability that she has being an amputee from a bone cancer has resulted in her being the strong, determined, and goal-oriented woman that she is today. And we share her story of what it's been like being a full-time traveler, homeschooling homeschooling her children and doing <laughs> doing what she does best which is going through the world disability or not and just doing the things she really wants to do whether that means exploring Angkor Wat in Cambodia or going to over six she was to eight countries last year and she <laughs> did full-time travel in an RV across the United States and is slain at life let's bring her in I'm here with Jody of Learners and Makers. Jody, introduce yourself. Who are you and where are you? Well, we are in Southeast Washington right now. I say we because I travel with my family of four, my husband, Anthony, and two kids, Connor and Aster. They are 11 and eight. And we travel full time. We left our home in August of 2022. So we're getting close to our first year. Heck yeah, I, and you have been literally around the world. Like between <laughs> 2022 and this year, 2023, how many countries will you have hit? We've been to, I think, eight different countries so far. Um, we tend to travel a little slower than like some because we like to have a sp spot we can hang out for like a whole month or something like that. Um, and uh, we'd like to try to get as close to maxing out our visa, our, our tourist visas <laughs> as we can. <laughs> just makes it a little easier, especially with the kids and just normal life. Because I actually struggled a little bit with like, what do I call what we're doing? It's not a vacation. Mm -hmm. And the closest thing I've come to is it's travel living because it is very much normal life, but we're traveling at the same time. So yeah. And we're yeah. going to double click into a lot of the things that you've said even now, because one of them that you talked about was um, that you left your home in 2022. And it's not like um, it's not like you just, you know, left and, uh, you know, you're headed back next month or you'll drop in next week. Explain to people what that means when you say you've left your home in 2022. Well, it means that we sold about 90 percent of our belongings um, both our cars, we had a pop-up camper. Those were the big things. And then all of our furniture, we have no furniture to come back to, um, whenever, if, when, I don't know, I can't even imagine coming back at this point. <laughs> um, but, uh, we have, you know, a few sentimental things, some Christmas ornaments and, 
the kids actually probably take up about 50% of our little sp storage space that we have because <laughs> we didn't limit how much they could keep. Um, yeah. So there's a lot of Legos in fort building pieces in the storage <laughs> unit. So you're a full-time travel family. What what exactly does that mean? Like, do your kids, are you, are you, do they go to school? Like, where do they call home? Tell me more about that. I, we really lean into the idea that home is kind of wherever we are. You know, we are home ourselves together. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we homeschool. We actually have always homeschooled, um, but uh, that was partially because we knew at some point we kind of wanted to do a year of, you know, the gap year or whatever. And that gap year idea has grown over the years. <laughs> and so when we finally decided, okay, we, we need, we're going to do this, um, we decided we were going to do it in an open-ended way, that there wasn't going to be an end date mm. in mind. Yeah, I actually really love that. You truly are traveling in that sense. So many of the things that you said just now is like the true, the true sentiment of a traveler. Um, but there is, that's not all though. I mean, not only are you full-time traveling and you're constantly on the go, and you have two young ones that you personally are homeschooling, you are also um, traveling with a disability. Talk to us about that. Yeah, so I'm an amputee, an above the knee amputee, and my I lost my left leg to cancer when I was 13. So it's been a while. <laughs> um, <laughs> But uh, that I've been an amputee and I almost, you know, now it's well over more years than not. <laughs> and um, so it's been my reality for a long time. And uh, there are definitely some things that I have to think about as an amputee traveling um, that are a little different that you might not have to think about normally. Um, and there are some limitations that I have. But I, it is actually part of the fuel for me personally. Mm -hmm. I know you just don't know how long you get. You know, you don't mm -hmm. know. And I'm a big believer in dreaming the big dreams and really going for them um, that you just don't get. You don't necessarily get second chances or chances later. So we really wanted to go for it all the way. I love that mindset. And you know, I definitely adopt that mindset. But I'm curious, though, and I, I know 13 wasn't wasn't last year. <laughs> <laughs> how how was that for you at that time as a child? Like, could you imagine back then that Jody is kicking ass in the world in the way she is now? Like, did you see that as a possibility? Not as the way I am now. I really thought I was like a roots person, you know, like you mm. stay in a home and you 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 stay there as long or forever or whatever. Um, and I will say, Anthony, my husband, is definitely the one who brought the idea and mm. the like love of travel mm. to me. I'd done a little bit of traveling before we met and we traveled before we had kids, but we actually like traveled a lot once Connor was born, our oldest. Yeah, interesting. Um, because he was free. <laughs> <laughs> Those first two years, they're a lap child. And so we yeah. were like, let's get in a bunch of trips while we can, basically. Smart. And um, that was kind of the initial motivation. In um, that first year, we took six pretty big trips. So... Um, including we flew with him as a toddler, just a little over a year old, um, to Japan. And yeah. that trip was so defining for him, even mm. though he doesn't remember it. It's so much a part of his personality now. What do you and mean by that? He And it was for us, too. We, know, we knew we could do it at that point. You know, we, if, we, if you can do it with a toddler... <laughs> Like an eight-year-old and 11-year-old is, you know, they have their own 
things, but it's, it gets easier. If you're yeah. in the toddler stage, you're listening and you're in the toddler stage, it gets easier. <laughs> <laughs> Did you mean that it was a defining moment for Connor or a defining moment for you and Anthony? I think both, honestly. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just feel like, um, you know, Connor, he doesn't remember it, but he, he's heard about it a lot. And, um, and it just, it just, he knows, you know, it's part of him. And it's interesting kind of the different confidence and feelings about travel and everything. He has always loved travel. And um, mm -hmm. I just feel like those experiences early on helped make that, you know, part of him. And, um, you know, you don't ever know. People stop us all the time and they say, oh, my gosh, what a wonderful thing you're giving your children. And mm -hmm. and we agree. <laughs> But you don't know totally. We just plant all these little seeds and hope that they grow into something that they love and appreciate mm. later, you know? So. That's powerful. Yeah, that's really <laughs> powerful. Actually, tell me this, because I can't tell you how many, because, um, you know, I was not 13 years old recently either, but a, <laughs> a lot of my peers are now settled in, you know, starting to have kids, all the things. And a lot of them tell me, you know, once, once I have a kid, there's no way, no way I could travel. What would you say to that parent to encourage them to consider it? Aside from the good one that uh, it's a lap child, so it's free. <laughs> so free. <laughs> that just tells you that we're cheap, right? I mean, <laughs> budget friendly, budget forward, budget friendly. <laughs> well, um, so you know, it doesn't have to be. I think there's a huge emphasis on it being kind of big or grand, and like what we're doing right now is kind of big and grand, right? Um, we spent six months in Southeast Asia and we went to Japan recently again, cause we love it so much. And we're back in the U S and RVing across and all those things sound really big. And I think people think, oh, I could, I could never do that. Right. But we didn't start that way. I mean, we did some of these big trips when Connor was a baby and, and, but there were also years in there where we didn't do a whole lot of traveling mm -hmm. and, um, but what got us to the bigger and grander things was like doing the little weekend trip, even doing mm. the day trip and not staying overnight or doing the yeah. camp trip or whatever that felt close and doable and accessible. And um, it, you just get better at it. It takes practice. And so if you're feeling out of practice with it, you know, it's, if you don't do it, you're not going to get any better. <laughs> I feel like that's so true in so many, like, for example, a lot, I love traveling alone and so many women come to me like, oh, I'm scared to do it, you know? And it's like, yo, don't go take the huge trip first. Like, don't go abroad for five weeks on your first solo trip. Like, do the small ones in the same way. Like, so many of our big badass moments in life aren't all of a sudden like doing the thing. It's like you've built your courage over time by doing all the little small things. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, I love that. All right. I dig that answer. But I want to double click on one thing that you said there, which is about go going to Southeast Asia. Because you have gone to places that I don't, in my opinion, don't seem easy for someone with a disability. And in, a, in an old life, Christine rode a bike from Bangkok, Thailand to Angkor Wat. And wow. Angkor Wat is one of the, mo oh, that was an awful, hot, long, beautiful, <laughs> lots of learnings bike ride that took a week. But Angkor Wat is a very, very special place. It is also not an easy place to just go run around Anchor Wat, even when you do have two perfectly working legs. And so actually for someone who, who doesn't, who hasn't had the pleasure, like I have of meeting you IRL, um, what does it look like? Or what is the experience like being an amputee, like walking around versus, I don't know, I guess someone who doesn't have one, like, what does that look like? And then talk to me about your experience kicking ass in Anchor Wat. Yeah. So one of, you know, I mean, I, even though it's been a few years since I was 13, I'm constantly on this journey. And sometimes I discover new things as whatever. We all discover new things about ourselves. Um, 
I really adopted using a walking stick, a hiking stick. I use a hiking stick over like a cane, partially because, I mean, I think it looks cooler. Whatever. I'm just going to lean into that. It looks cooler than a cane. But also, it's like collapses down super small. I have a collapsible one. So if mm. I want to tuck it under a chair or even put it in a bag instead of having it, I it's really easy to do. And it has, like, I could take the rubber point off if I was icy or something like it. It just is a little more versatile. Um, so I travel with two of those, actually. And um, But in the airport, I use one anytime I'm walking a longer distance. And I used to be really resistant to even using that because it I felt like admitting a weakness or that I wasn't strong enough or something. And, um, I now just have decided it's not worth worrying about that. Something you get maybe with being a little bit older and just being like, I just want to go and do the things and not be tired and not hurt afterwards. So, um, that really makes a big difference on how far I can go and how, how I feel at the end of the day, if my back is, you know, hurting or if I'm feeling okay. Um, so that's like my biggest tool as an amputee and um and i use it almost all the time when we're traveling because we don't really know we we haven't had any transportation of our own until we got the rv here in the u.s Mm -hmm. and so we're walking everywhere and there were days we were doing if japan is like walking ultra i mean it's just like when getting to the And Singapore was kind of that way too. It just getting to the subway, getting down to the platform and, you know, even if you're in the elevators are sometimes further away than Mm -hmm. the staircases. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily like, Oh, you just take the elevator and it's less. It's actually could be just as many steps. So, yeah. um, Yeah. So I use the stick a lot. And then someplace like Encore, like we, I had both my sticks and you really realize like how standardized um, our stairs are, ramps are, all of that as you're kind of moving through the world. Um, I mean, I've seen ramps that just were ridiculous. Like there's no way anybody is getting up or down. <laughs> my kids enjoy them. They become more like slides than ramps, <laughs> you know? <laughs> But like the stairs to even like, obviously ancient stairs, there's no standardization. So you could have a stair yeah. that's very, very, very tall. That's very, very wide. And they put all the stair, like a stair in every doorway to keep the like bad spirits out and stuff. Ah, so yeah. There's just a lot of climbing and we just would really stay in touch with like, how are we doing Are we feeling tired? You know, am I feeling tired? And there were times where like Anthony didn't feel as tired as I did. And so I just hung out with our tuk-tuk driver and the kids were a little done. And so Anthony went and did a little something on his own. You know, we watched the monkeys steal mangoes and stuff like that. So (laughs) we, we still got a great time, but it was not something, you know, we just, there's times when I have to say no. And maybe in another, you know, I mean, I feel like it's a healthy thing. Like it's a healthy thing to be able to be like, I, I'm done. <laughs> yeah, that's so. That's so true. I, I love this story of self care that's coming out and truly listening to oneself. Um, and I, I'm curious if you have felt like your disability has held you back from doing the things that you want to do, because there are times recently, even for myself, because even though I've, um, I've talked about travel burnout on this podcast, I still continue to burn myself out because there are so many times I'm just doing really sick things, just like, you know, you are exploring Anchor Wat, where it's like, it's hard. It's really mm-hmm. hard to say no sometimes. Yeah. Um, and you might push yourself too far. Um, but I, and also, by the way, for those of you who are curious how Jody uh, slayed at Anchor Wat, I'll link that video in the show notes below. Um, because I love that you gave back helpful tips for others who have disabilities um, to be able to still see this truly amazing ancient place. Um, but I'm curious, are there times in which you have felt like, I don't know, like, 
I, I don't want this just to be this raw, raw story of, you know, oh, Jody's amazing. Everything is awesome. Uh, <laughs> cue the Legos, you know, the Lego movie song. <laughs> like, I know. What are the Those are in the about- storage unit, Christine. <laughs> Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> like, tell, tell me about like a low moment that you had. Yeah. So, I mean, I think there are definitely times when we get places and I'm like, oh, that sounds cool. And then I just kind of have to exit out. And actually, one of our, one of my biggest things has to do with water, actually. I mean, there's distance, length of going, but I feel like a lot of people kind of have like, oh, I can walk this far or I can't walk this far. I can climb this much. And, but one of the kind of weird things for me is water because I actually have a very, very spiffy computerized leg. Hmm. And what does that mean? So I got it. um, They they came out in uh, like early 2000s, like very early to maybe even 2000. And um, I got it pretty early on. I've had a few since then because they do not last forever. But um, and maybe it was like a year old, 2001 or something. And I got I was able to get one and um, it changed my life, like Mm -hmm. hugely changed my life. And that's because the computer can um, engage the hydraulic that's in the knee to bend Mm -hmm. slow or to swing through freely. Mm. And mine now is even more advanced and it's, I don't even understand it quite as (laughs) all the way, (laughs) but um, it, that's the basics of it. So if I put my weight on it and I haven't gone over my toe, it'll bend very slow and I can not fall, which is Mm. huge when you're like on uneven terrain when you're on going down a ramp or going downstairs, I can ride my knee. I can ride the hydraulic going down mm-hmm. the ramp. And um, and then you want it to swing th- free when you're going through with your step, right? Mm-hmm. Or it even has, it's even as fancy as having different modes. So I can have a bike mode. So it'll just be free all the time oh, and not have anything. Yeah. So I can have a yoga mode fancy. if I want. Oh, wow. <laughs> Wait, is really there a drinking hell. and dancing mode? <laughs> yeah. I just do that on my own. <laughs> but it really helps with, you know, some of those limitations. Unfortunately, with a computer, there's an issue of being waterproof. Oh. And so it's water resistant in the similar way that like your phone is. And yeah. it's, that's pretty water resistant, mm-hmm. but um, it's a really expensive thing. <laughs> it's not quite as easy as replacing your phone. And uh, so there's just a little bit of a fear for me. It didn't used to be water resistant at all. I will say mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. the old school ones <laughs> all the way back in 2000. <laughs> They weren't water resistant at all. So I have this little leftover part of me that's like, can't get it wet. Mm -hmm, But mm -hmm. anything with water, I'm on crutches then. And I don't have my leg. And I will say, like, I am a prosthetic user. Like, I don't mind being on my crutches, but my leg is where I'm most comfortable. All right. I don't know. But, like, if you think about any water-related activities, generally you need sea legs for them. In other words, (laughs) like, it's not easy to walk around on two normal legs. Yes. Yeah. So So I can imagine how that would be difficult for you to do things. Because did – is it, my, is it my imagination or did you do Halong Bay when you were in Vietnam? We did do Halong Bay. Yeah. And we, I mean, I loved it. it that was great. I mean, I just, and the other thing is I love the water. <laughs> the water is one of my favorite places <laughs> to be. So, you know, I'm constantly at a like, what can I do and what can I not? So Halong Bay, like a big boat like that, that's easy enough. That's not a big deal. But anything smaller can be tricky. Mm. Anything where I could potentially really be getting wet. Um, and especially like seawater is also very hard on electronics if they get wet, you know, the salt and everything. Of course. Um, so that's probably one of my biggest limitations, you know, I mean, okay, this is kind of a crazy example, but it, when we were in Vietnam, there was like this cool place with like a river and a zip line, you'd zip line into the river and everything. And I was just like, no, there's just no way. I mean, I wanted to go do this thing, <laughs> but just 
it just was like between the like, where am I with my crutches? And then how do I get or something as simple as just like a water park and going down water slides like mm -hmm. somebody has to go up, 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 up the stairs. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then take my crutches down. So oh. I got to have a good volunteer who's willing to go. Who's the normal down volunteer? The, down the slide. <laughs> I guess you can't throw the crutches down the slide, can you? Who's the normal volunteer? Is it Anthony? Anthony will do it. <gasps> <laughs> Stalker. Just kidding, just kidding, just kidding. That's called that's called a good called a solid significant other. Yeah. That's powerful. Actually, hold on, let's do a quick pause. Cause I'm curious, if you aren't living this life you are now, a full time travel, being on the road, homeschooling your kids, <laughs> going down water slides, going to Halong <laughs> Bay, what would you alternatively be doing right now? Hmm. Do you mean like, what did I do before we were living our travel life kind of? Maybe if you didn't choose the life of travel that you chose now, like what would you be doing now? So here's an example. I quit the corporate world in 2020. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the world was up in flames. It was time to jump ship and do something else. <laughs> um, and that was when I made my big jump. If I didn't make that jump and to be honest, the pandemic really made me feel exactly along the lines of what you were saying, which is uh, this life is really short and sweet and you really got to make the most of it and, and do the things you really want to do in life. Um, but if the pandemic didn't happen to propel me into that future, Christine would still be living in San Francisco now. I would mm -hmm. still be working for a big corporate Fortune 500 something. Um, and spending all my weekends probably in the nightclub drinking champagne and all my daytime working in a cubicle. That's what I would be doing. Yeah. What would you be doing? So I, um, previous to traveling full time, um, I was homeschooling my kids before pandemic. So we did that anyway. Um, but I was a violin teacher, actually, mm. a Suzuki violin teacher. I can and, see that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, and my change definitely was partially pandemic fueled. Um, I felt this urgency um, for my kids' childhood a little bit. Like it felt like their childhoods kind of got put on pause a little bit when the pandemic hit. And um, I didn't, I really didn't like that because it's very limited time that we get with our kiddos. And so we always, like I said, we always knew we wanted to do at least a gap year and we had kind of planned on doing it a little later than what we are now. We thought we'd do it right before kind of Cotter was entering high school. And then we'd kind of land back in case he wanted kind of the normal mm. high school experience. And, we still, you know, if he really wanted the normal high school experience, that's very hard for me to imagine. He loves kind of that we live this alternative lifestyle too. He can, he really embraces it. But um, but if he did, if he had a change of heart, you know, that's kind of in our back pocket. But as the pandemic hit, I just felt like, oh my gosh, we need to go earlier than we were first planning and we mm. need to do this. And I was feeling pretty burnt out, honestly. I just had kind of hit some end of the road spots in my professional goals and they were out of my control. There was nothing I could really do about it. Partially pandemic, partially larger association of what I was allowed to do and not allowed to do as far as getting growing. And I'm a goal oriented person. <laughs> so um, Anthony is, was a freelance writer and has been, um, for more than 10 years. And we just kind of were like, you know, let's expand your business and I'm going to jump off and do, you know, do join you in your business. We both were running our own businesses and it felt really good to kind of consolidate. Hmm. I had to go through though, a pretty long, about a year of kind of mourning what I thought I was going to be because mm. I spent more than 20 years being a violin teacher and I, I loved it. And um, it wasn't just a like, oh, I'm done now. And it wasn't like a totally mm. clean, like, oh, I'm just going to move off and do this other thing. 
Um, you know, I had aspirations to be the little old lady at the conference and getting the, you know, lifetime achievement awards of having done this for however many years and, you know, whatever. And I, I don't know, maybe someday I'll go back to teaching. I'm not saying that's, you know, totally off the table, but um, I had to kind of let go of those things that I imagined to move into this. And now I, I really love what, I mean, I love what we do. I wouldn't go back and like change it. Um, what got you over that hump? Like you said, it was, a, it was a year for you to like kind of yeah. mourn that, which is normal. I, yeah. I used to not anymore. I used to mourn my own, my old life all the time. I used to miss living in the city, being able to walk everywhere. And mm -hmm. I used to miss being around all of my friends all the time instead of being a traveler, who's constantly a stranger in a strange place. And what got me over my mourning was realizing that the adventure in my new life was limitless. Mm -hmm. And once I could embrace that and be like, I could literally be doing anything, anywhere, in the world at any time that I was like two middle fingers up to my old life. I was like, <laughs> do, do not miss that anymore. What got you over your mourning period? Are you able to put your finger on that? I would say it was, it was kind of like, yeah. I mean, I definitely agree with you on that. Like just the, in the endless possibilities, especially since I was feeling so capped off and like I said, I'm a very goal-oriented person. I like to grow. Our brand is called Learners and Makers, and that's because we really believe in lifelong learning. And every time I kept going back to like, okay, yeah, I could be here and be doing the same thing for years and years and years, and it's essentially like the same cycle of whatever, um, I, I just couldn't, like, I, I knew that that wasn't a path, at least, yeah, it wasn't a path for me. And it, it is hard for me to think about going back to that because it's, it just, this has been so good for our family and for me and for Anthony's, you know, now our, I mean, it was always our business, but it, the growth of that has just been so good. And also, Instead of us having two businesses, we just have one business. And that's just everything felt like oh, this was meant to be like this was, you know, a good move for our family. Um, but I didn't want to I guess I didn't want to shy away from some of the feelings that I had of like of missing some of it wasn't even so much the current state of things as the the dreams I had of what my life would look like, you mm -hmm. know, and just kind of letting go of, of that. Like you get kind of an idea of like, Oh, my life is going to be this. And mm -hmm. I had to let, let go of some of those things before I could really move on um, to fully embracing what we're doing now. Yeah. I can relate to that. I mean, I had, I had spent so much of my life building this idea of Christine that would get married, that would buy a house in the city, that would settle down and and then blah, 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 blah. And I had accomplished half of those things off the list. And you literally become so tied to that, that sometimes it's almost becomes like a checklist of what you personally feel like you should be doing in life and no longer what's really right and true for you. And it's hard mm -hmm. to step into the new things that are the right things and really embrace them until you can completely let go of the, of that previous kind of roadmap that you had for yourself. I can, I can see that you just yeah. gotta let go. Can, can I tell you about something I'm laughing about right now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so I, for those of you who, um, are not familiar with Jody with learners and makers. Uh, I I knew from day one when I met her, which was I don't know a year and a half ago. We were in exactly where she's traveling right now, which is Tri Cities, <laughs> Washington. Um, and I was like, damn, this woman's a badass. 
Like she's just going through life doing the things that she wants to do. She has a disability. She's got kids and she's just doing the things. <laughs> and I was really hoping to uncover in this podcast, like the, the, the motivation where you've really had to push yourself to like overcome the hard things. And what I'm realizing is not nah, like that's just built into you. And I'm laughing right now because I'm like, yo, she's as much of a badass as I thought because like, when things get hard, you'll just, you'll take care of yourself. You'll listen to what you need, but then you will manage around the things you need to do. Whether that means, yo, husband, take these crushes down the water slide while I go <laughs> we down this <laughs> slide. And by we, I mean like we, and not like go, go to the bathroom, we, uh, which I'm guessing most people understand. Uh, I, oh, Jody, I love that. Like you're such a breath of fresh air, which is like, I don't, I don't, because, and actually, I'm going to be totally transparent. When the first time I met you and I learned that you were a traveler, when you move, when you are literally walking through life, walking through rooms, it doesn't look simple. It doesn't look easy. Like, and, and I had my moments in Tri Cities the first time I saw you and met you. And I was trying to, because I do a gratitude exercise every day. And one of the things I, that is always on that list is that I, um, I have the fortune of my health. And there are so many, <laughs> I don't know if you know this, but I'm an aspiring professional pickleball player. Um, there are lots of athletics in my life. I know. <laughs> that, <laughs> that are part of my day to day where I need everything, right? I need all of my limbs. And I, I wouldn't, I don't want to say I wouldn't be able to deal with being an amputee, but it would not be easy for me to live my current life. And I applaud you not just for fucking doing it, but having the mindset that you do and going through all of that. I'm curious because you're, you're just doing it for those who might be listening to this, who Either for those of you who are watching the video right now, Jody's got a kid in the room with her uh, wh who, who has headphones on, which is why I'm freely using profanity over here. Because um, I mean, this is this is Jody living her real life right now. You're, you're in a hotel right now, right? We're actually at the library. Oh, even better. She's in room number four at the library in Tri Cities. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> uh, doing the thing, doing the thing. And I had asked her to podcast with me. Um, and literally, like, what, three hours ago, you're like, yeah, okay. And then you like <laughs> walk in the library with your, with your kid and your and your fancy road microphone. <laughs> and here we are. Um, for those who might be listening to this, who either have kids or might have a disability, but they really want to travel, but they feel a little bit limited. What would you say to them to encourage them? You know, I think at the very least, start small. You know, just push be push your comfort zone just a little bit. That circle of the comfort zone just gets wider and wider as you kind of push it out a little further because you'll find that you do that first little push and then the circle's gotten bigger and then you do another push and the circle's gotten bigger. You know, you just kind of keep playing. It can be very playful with that edge, you know, and where that is. And um, you might learn things that you don't want to do again. That's very valuable too. And you might learn things that you are easier than you thought they would be, or, you know, that, that are very doable. Um, so definitely we like to play with that edge of, I, and I say we, cause I speaking for me and my husband, <laughs> it's something that we help each other with. Honestly, um, we have a great partnership that way where we can push each other to be, uh, just outside of our comfort zone and, and in a way that's healthy and and listening and responsive to what the other person is expressing yes, as well. Yes, I love that. And there's something yeah. you said in there that's really important because so many people associate pushing out of your comfort zone, i.e. discomfort, with pain. 
They yes. associate discomfort with pain and it doesn't have to be that way. And I love what you chose to say, which is playful, be playful with that. Because there are so many times that you can push those edges in a really fun way. Um, I like to do that on the dance floor with weirder and weirder dance moves all the time. I or love that. <laughs> like how weird can I get right now? <laughs> And it's really important, right? And those moments where, for me, when I am being, to, uh, I don't want to say reckless on the dance floor, but like ridiculous, like completely ridiculous on the dance floor, it builds my confidence. Because if I can laugh at myself in those moments, in the more serious moments in my life, I can, I can also laugh at myself too, if I can, you know, playfully push those edges in those moments also. Yes, question, Jody. Are you a badass? <laughs> why or why not? I think I'm a badass. <laughs> why? Enlighten us. Um, I don't, I don't know. I do. Hmm. I have to think about it for a second. That's all right. You can think about it. Maybe I've had enough people say. It. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've always felt really confident, I guess, in, I mean, not in every single way or something, but um, confident in the core of my being, I guess maybe is what it is, that, um, that I was trying my best, that I was trying to be helpful to the people around me, you know, that I cared about the people around me and continue like continually improving and learning. And um, I feel like all of those things make, make me a badass, you know, yes. um, I'm not perfect at it all the time, you know, by any means, but I, I do try. And I think, um, yeah, I think I have a unique and fun outlook on life. And definitely being an amputee and being a cancer survivor is all interwoven with that. Um, you know, some people wonder, like, if you could go back, would you change it or stuff like that? And I would never change it, honestly. Um, and people sometimes are kind of shocked by that because, like, why wouldn't you want to, you know, have the freedom of having both your legs or just not go through cancer treatment and all of that. But um, for me, I mean, I have the privilege of having survived it. So that helps. But I, it, it's so interwoven with who I am. And I just don't think I would be the person I am. So it would be like saying, oh, I would want to go back and be a completely different person, which is very hard to want to go back to. I don't know what that would be. So maybe it would be the same ish. Maybe it wouldn't. I don't know. Um, yeah. So I guess that's kind of why I think I'm badass. That is so <laughs> fucking powerful. Yes. Well, you know that I think you're a badass. Tell, tell, share with everyone, where can they find you at? So you can find us all over the, all the socials. We have a website, YouTube, TikTok, pretty much anywhere at learners and makers. So learnersandmakers.com or learners and makers in all of the spots. And um, we really lean into that lifelong learning and making our own destiny. I love that. And all of that info will be linked in the show notes below. So please connect with Jody. Thank you so much for doing this with me. Thank you. I think you can see why I love Jody. Please connect with her at Learners and Makers. All of that info is in the show notes below. And please connect with me. I'm at Christine Lozada everywhere. If this podcast touched you in any way, please leave a positive review. Your positive review will help to distribute this to more people. I love Jody. She's amazing. Go forth. Be badass. We'll see you in the next adventure. Ciao.